Sometimes error detection alone is not enough. When errors are detected using a checksum or cyclic redundancy check, it necessitates the retransmission of the damaged data. When data retransmission is costly and transmission errors are common, a more efficient scheme is forward error correction. This is typical in wireless applications or when satellites are used for transmission. So forward error correction involves transmitting extra data so that certain errors can be corrected without any data being retransmitted. This approach depends on a measure called Hamming distance. Hamming distance is a metric for measuring the distance between two bit strings of the same length. For example, consider the following two bit strings the Hamming distance between these two strings of equal length is simply the number of positions in which their values differ. So these are both ones, but here we have a zero and a one, so that is one position where they differ. Here is another position where they differ. They're the same in that position and in that position, but they differ here. So the distance between these two bit strings is three and we will sometimes use a little d to indicate that the distance between the string 101101 and 110100 is equal to 3. Given this knowledge, we can talk about forward error correction. Forward error correction requires the creation of an error correcting code. Specifically, both the sender and the receiver will have a dictionary of code words that look like the following. This dictionary maps each possible 2-bit sequence to a 5-bit code word. So note that there are many bit strings of length 5 that are not code words. This will allow us to detect errors. Let's encode the following sequence. This sequence of bits is what the sender wants to send. It will use this dictionary to transform each 2-bit sequence into a 5-bit code word, like so. Here I have mapped each 2-bit sequence to its corresponding code word according to our dictionary. Now this longer bit string is what will actually be transmitted. So you can see that the length of the code words incurs a cost in terms of the number of bits that need to be sent. But by sending these extra bits we buy the ability to correct certain errors without needing to retransmit anything. Here's how this works. Let's say that of each of these code words that we send, some are received okay, but some are garbled. For example, this first one will be received exactly as it was sent, 11100. But this next one will be garbled slightly, and instead of receiving five zeros, we will receive a one and four zeros. Now I will fill out the rest of this with a mixture of garbled and correctly received code words. This bit string that I've written out is what the receiver actually sees. The receiver has no knowledge about where errors occurred. It only knows that it, it has received these bits. However, the receiver also has this same dictionary. And so it will try to decode each code word into its corresponding 2-bit sequence. If the code word that it reads is in the dictionary, then this mapping process goes very smoothly, like so. We simply take this and map it back to 0, 1. No problem. However, when this code word is encountered, this is actually an invalid code word, or arguably not a code word. It's not in our dictionary. So we take 
this sequence of five bits, one, zero, 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 and compare it to each of the valid code words to get an idea of which one it is most likely to have been. We will do this using Hamming distance. So the Hamming distance between this bit string and the first code word is 1 because there's only one bit different between the code word and this actual bit string. The distance between this string and the next code word is 2 from this string to this code word the difference is also 2 and from this string to the last code word the difference is actually 5. So these are the Hamming distances between these code words and this invalid code word. Now having multiple bit errors is less likely than having fewer bit errors. If this were the actual original code word that had been sent, five bit flips would have to have occurred in order to get this result. That result is therefore very unlikely, and we will therefore assume that's not what happened. It's more likely that one of these two code words was the original code word being sent, but these two possibilities are still even less likely than this one because this code word only needs to have one of its bits flipped to get this result. And so whichever of the code words is the closest to the invalid code word in terms of hamming distance is the one that we will view as most likely. So we will interpret this as having been a sequence of five zeros, which using our dictionary decodes to zero zero. And we know that that is in fact what the sender initially sent. So everything worked out fine in this case. Let's see another example. Here we have one 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 zero, and we will once again calculate the Hamming distance between this invalid code word and all the valid code words. So those distances are, so now we have a new set of Hamming distances and once again there is a clear winner in terms of which code word is closest to the received invalid code word in terms of Hamming distance. That means that this will be interpreted as having originally been 11100 which only has a Hamming distance of 1 from what we actually received. And if that was the code word that was originally sent, then the bits that it encodes are 0 and 1. Now here is another sequence. This one is a correctly received code word, so we simply use the dictionary and decode it directly to 1,1. One, one. No problem there. And then we have another one received an error. So this invalid code word is not in our dictionary and we will once again compute the Hamming distances from this invalid code word to each of the valid code words, like so. So here we have the Hamming distances between these code words and this invalid code word but this time we have a problem. There are two code words that are tied for the minimum Hamming distance from our invalid code word. That means that this code word is just as likely to have been the original code word as this one. This is a case where we can detect that an error occurred because this code word is invalid, but we cannot correct it without retransmission. So there is uncertainty down here. There are two possibilities for what this could be. And because of that, 
the response from the system will be to tell the original sender to resend that portion of the data. So forward error correction can often allow us to correct errors without requiring retransmission, but sometimes retransmission is unavoidable. And this is one of those example cases. Moving on, we have here another case where we know exactly what the original code word was, so we decode that, no problem. Now here we have a somewhat serious problem. The original code word was five zeros. Three bit errors occurred to give us the sequence one zero zero one one. This is actually a valid code word. So when the receiver sees this, it will simply decode it to one zero. However, we know because we can tell what the sender actually sent, that this is actually incorrect. So we have a case where an undetectable error was transmitted. This can technically occur, but it should be noted that this is unlikely and that the other forms of error detection we discussed, namely checksums and cyclic redundancy checks, are also susceptible to errors of this sort. It's always possible that errors in transmission will transform the data into some other form that looks completely valid. But in general, that should not be very likely. In this case, three bit errors in one code word is fairly unlikely, and it is even further unlikely that it would decode to a valid code word. Three bit errors could happen, but create an invalid code word. And we can make our system more robust by simply having longer code words. So this is technically a possibility, but one that has a low probability of occurring. The last sequence is simply a valid code word that decodes with no problem. So we have here examples of code words that are in our dictionary and get decoded without any problems. We have examples of invalid code words but that are close enough to valid code words that we can decode them to what they are most likely to have been originally. And we also have situations where we're certain an error occurred, but we don't know what the original code word was, so we request that data be resent. Forward error correction is a powerful scheme because we can detect many errors and ask data to be resent as with other error detection methods, but we can also correct some errors without any retransmission being needed.